the new five motor Tesla. <laughs> this is called the Plaid Plus. The Plaid Plus. The Plaid Plus of Amino. It does look like a time machine. <laughs> <track. I've done laughs> I know, right? That's a lot of stuff going on back <laughs> there. This uh, is a, how many? A 12, 24, 3,200 horsepower car right now. 3,200 horsepower. Your hair and makeup done? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. good. We good? Hey guys, one, welcome back. <laughs> hey, uh, we got some more updates from, you, from the Revolt Garage. Uh, we have a whole new system going into the Mustang. Uh, we got to talk about uh, some other fun stuff that we got going on with Legacy EV. We're gonna do some training videos about BMSs for SEMA. Um, Tesla Mino's in here for a little bit of an update as well. So we're gonna cover a couple of things. Um, anything update on your, any updates in your truck? Um, the only real big update is we've been having so much rain. Ain't nobody got time for that. Haven't had a chance to pull her out. Can't work on an electric vehicle in the rain. So not his at least. Yeah. BMS is still coming. Battery management system for the Hillblade Deluxe. That's also coming, and so is the upgrade for the dock. Yeah, so like, subscribe to our channel. Um, leave your comments down below. Whatever you guys have, we're gonna try to answer as much as possible. And we're gonna dive more into the education part of this and the next video. So let's kind of look at what we have here today. Uh, so the dock is going through a big transformation. Um, we kind of got her ready for SEMA. It was up and running. There was a couple things missing. Uh, we upgraded a lot of things to the, to the electronics portion of this. The Wheel and Welshman's been running, what, 300 feet of wire? <laughs> no, 300 new wires. 300 new wires. Yeah, 300 yeah, yeah. new wires in this car. So tons of stuff. Uh, it has a whole CAN network inside of it now. Um, as you can see, I mean, this is just part of what's going on. This is just for the cans. We got our twisted pairs going through. We got, what, three networks going through the car? Four. Four networks going through the car. So 1965, you know, old school stuff meets modern, modern day technology. Um, we are using the AEM system that we're upgrading to right now for the car. We did have the AEM dash in it for SEMA. That was giving us our speed, uh, certain different telemetry. Now, since we've upgraded to a full AEM system, we have our full BMS. As you can see, there's some satellites here. Uh, this is the AEM VCU 200, so this is a vehicle control unit. It basically is the brains behind everything going on in the car. Uh, we have our power distribution units as well, so this turns switches on and off, fans, pumps, so on and so forth. Um, our, our basically our Prindle switch or a gear selection switch, so we could you know go park, neutral drive, we have some auxiliaries, some different buttons to activate certain things in the car. And then we have something from AM, this is one of their new products called the CCU, so it's a combined charging unit. So that has your DC to DC step down. So basically that runs like an alternator. It'll take your 400 volts or your high voltage and drop it down to about 13.8 volts. So you could run that inside your car, charge your battery, run all your 12 volt systems. It's all water cooled. It's really small too. This is kind of one of the smallest units we've seen so far. We can't wait to try it out. Um, we do have this mounted to a piece of plywood. So this is kind of our own proprietary system here. Uh, we call it plaid design. Plywood assisted design, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we even got what? We got some mold on this it's, thing, uh, too. That's patina. That's <laughs> patina. <laughs> People pay extra for that. Oh, yeah. It's live edge. Yeah. <laughs> live. <laughs> exactly. So, what we kind of did here is we walked up the back of the car with some plywood um, just to kind of see where things would land. And what we do is we kind of visually just stack this stuff up. And then I take it back to the computer. We do some measurements, everything off of everything. And then I put this together on a piece of metal, get it cut by Send Cut Send, our favorite people for cutting any kind of stuff. And then that arrives here and we take it off the plywood. We put it in the car and magically, hopefully everything fits the first time. And uh, yeah. you wanna talk about some of the wire looms and what you gotta do for the BMS? Yeah, you gotta do some forward planning for sure. You don't wanna walk, run a bunch of wire and then come back later and realize you gotta add a bunch of wires to it. Um, so we've been, you know, maybe a day I ran like two wires because the whole time you gotta <laughs> think ahead. How many uh, extra holes did we have to drill? Only like two or three. Not which, too bad. Not too bad, which if you had to go back in because you realized you forgot something, talk about another hole in the, in the bulkhead or pulling your entire wiring harness back out again. So we're trying to avoid that. Uh, it's pretty good practice to run a spare wire or two because you're gonna need one. At we some did. point, yeah. Oh, one of those used already, yeah, for the weight switches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one of the things uh, I want to give a, a shout out for Legacy EV and their training program, and one of the modules in the training program is specifically this. Yeah. Lay out 
where your components are gonna be so that you know how much wire, how long the wire, you know where the components are gonna be in relationship to each other. So that's one of the big things that they actually focus on is in building an EV. What do they call right. it? Do it right, don't do it twice. Proper prior planning prevents this poor performance. <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. it. The, throw, the yeah. multiple piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say Proper planning twice. prevents piss poor performance. There you go. There you go. <laughs> ah, you got two. <laughs> That's a Navy thing right there. <laughs> Can you do that in Welsh? No. <laughs> <laughs> if I could, you wouldn't want to hear it. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, planning's a big thing. That's, that's kind of, yeah. you know, I think you spent two or three days just going through all the pinouts everything that needs to be on this particular system. Make sure you understand it before you are wrong. Cause it's gonna take you more time to undo it and redo it than it would to sit there and get it, you know, right first time. I mean, luckily we do have AEM as, you know, we have them a phone call away, which yeah. is good for us. So Sam over at AEM was able to help us out. We had a couple man, questions. Everything makes a lot of sense. Like we came, had a couple of questions for him, stacked them up and it was, all the text port and it was fantastic. Yeah. You call up, hey, what's this? And it wasn't like someone who goes to the manual and goes, oh, well, I, I think it was this. No, Sam just is like, here's what it is. And oh, this is yeah, why. that makes perfect sense. Like, yeah, it yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, he told us why, too, because yeah. you don't want to do this. And, you know, yeah. we have a lot of safeties involved with these cars, too. I mean, you're running up to 400 volts on some of these lines that are very, very tiny. So if you cut the wrong one in the right, wrong place, feeding it through the bulkheads, grommet everything to pieces. These are all things you really have to pay attention to because it may work for a month or two, but all that bumping down the road and the road grime, and you gotta think about this stuff because if you don't, it's gonna get in your wiring. It's gonna start chattering. It's gonna, you know, the abrasive material that are inside these cars, floorboards too, people kick things. Yep. You gotta remember, you gotta have passengers, your buddies, you you know, stick their foot somewhere that they probably shouldn't underneath the dash. and that stuff's gotta be tied up pretty tight. So yep. um, we're gonna be going through that in, in greater detail on all the BMSs and, and uh, all the hardcore wiring that goes into that stuff too, because that's another what, just 96 wires just on the, the sniffing side. Of just it. on the cell taps, then you got three thermistors, a positive and negative for the thermistor on each of yeah. the six BMS modules that are in there. So yeah, it's gonna be- uh, What are you BMS stand for? Oh man, that's a good question. Oh, too, too I think it's battery right? management system. Uh, <laughs> so this, we're not gonna use, obviously, the plywood, but uh, this was just for mock-up. We designed this rear firewall panel to hold some of these components. And the reason we did this is, hey, make your job a lot better. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not hidden up under the dash when you're wiring it. You can get in there and, and work on the thing, get your wire lengths and stuff right the first time. And we can pull that panel out, which is great too. So if we need to change out a module or maybe redesign something, we pull the whole thing out. Um, also what it lets us do is we like to show off what's inside the car. This is not just you know a really fun car to drive, but there's a lot of tech in here. One of the problems that you have with EVs is you pop the hood and there's nothing in there. You're looking at like basically a, a there's nothing, there's, a, there's yeah. a blank trunk. Here at least you get to kind of feel and touch things and see where things are going. And we can explain to people what certain things are. So you got accessibility and aesthetics. And <coughs> service, service is a huge one. Yeah. You definitely want to build your car for service. So you got all of the uh, network wiring, all of the 12 volt stuff runs in one loom right down the side. And then that's gonna tap off your CCU to each BMS down here, and then the BMS is going to run, you know, one, two, three to the modules. So it should, if I do my job right, it should look pretty trick by the time we're done and be easy to explain. You know, you can explain to someone who hasn't seen one of these before, like, yeah. oh, this wire goes right here. It's not totally obfuscated, it's not totally hidden behind a, a big plastic panel. You kind of want it to be a teaching tool as well as a, just a fun car. And then, you know, we talked about the planning and what he did to lay it out. So this is just a kind of one of the things that he had the forethought of. So these are the cooling lines. So you notice that they, the cooling lines, once they're connected, they won't block anything. But if he had put them over here, then everything, the, the text would be upside down. So that just kind of gives you an idea of the planning that went into laying that board out. Good job, Wheeling Welshman. You can stick you can, you can stick <laughs> We do want to talk about uh, another project in here. It's an exciting one. Super top secret. Super top secret. Super top First secret. in the world. Oh yeah, so what is yeah. it? Well, we've had our dual motor cars. We've created right. some tri-motor cars. Mm -hmm. We got a Tesla with 
five motives in it. Oh yeah. Five, five. count them. Five, five motors. motors. Let's go take a look. Take that, Elon. Mr. Elon. <laughs> Mr. Elon. <laughs> and there she is, the five motor Tesla. Now, how much available horsepower is in this thing? Oh, you don't even want to know. Yeah, five, yeah. 10, 6, 12, 20, 20, what, 20, 2600 horsepower? There you go, 3200 in the bed right here. Oh yeah, so over 3000 horsepower. This thing packs, this, this pony packs a punch. So uh, this is uh, this is a rack of motors that it's going out to our machinist um, at this point. So these are all ready to be cut down and become one of our products. So luckily we have this really, really reliable truck, car, Teslamino we call it. The Teslamino. The Teslamino, this thing's been very good to me. I drive it daily. Some, uh... I beat the hell out of it. People either scratch their head or smile or both when they well, see me on the street. Some, uh... Or stop and take pictures. <laughs> that happens a lot. My yeah. wife hates driving this car. She goes, everyone stops and takes a picture of me and tint the windows. <laughs> and for the record, she speaks in that exact voice. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be in trouble. <laughs> oh, screw it. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> but this thing has some maintenance coming up, right? Or has some uh, a little care it needs. Yeah. It's so... being ridden hard and put away wet. Oh, yeah. I know. When you beat this thing up as much as we have, I think we're on our third motor in this car. Um, that's mostly my fault. That's not a Tesla flaw. That's just me. Um, but yeah, we're putting a trailer hitch on it. Trailer came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That curb just came out of nowhere. Uh, so we're putting a trailer hitch on it so we could tow some lightweight stuff around here. Um, also, we're getting a brand new hood put on it because um, I think this is actually this is not my fault. This was a Tesla recall. Um, I guess their hoods came up every once in a while, and this is that model. Um, there's a nice little scrunch there. My, I was taking my kid to school one morning. We're doing about 45 on the freeway. Was, luckily, there's traffic, so we weren't going fast. And the thing goes, wham! And my kid just ducks, and he's looking out this little oval where this was like <laughs> right over the windshield. And I'm looking down, we're pulling over, and people are just like, what the hell just happened? I get out, I'm actually jumping on the hood to get it folded back up and down. People are driving down the freeway like wondering, what the hell is that guy doing? My kid's like, Daddy, what just happened? I'm like, well, the hood came up. So hey, you know what? Out of that whole story, the one thing that just amazes me is it didn't break the windshield. They How does that? Last figured out. Th look at this. <laughs> oh, it, it was... totally wrinkled this up. Didn't break the windshield. Oh, it went up and over the top of the car. It hey, was... well, you know what? Kudos to Tesla on their <laughs> <laughs> their windshield design. They designed it to pop up and, and over, right? Hold on. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, the car's locked. Well, let me uh, pop the hood. It actually pops it when you unlock it. goes boing. <laughs> Spring loaded. So it's getting a new hood, right? So it's getting a new hood. Uh, getting, I got a new rim on it, too. We uh, had a little problem with a curb, too. You know, I got a little too close this, to my car. Take this back to Hot Dog for a new paint job. No way. This is my <laughs> paint job. My kids and I painted this for 40 bucks. We got a couple of rattle cans out and had some fun one weekend. Um, but I want to thank Straight Six for hooking us up with a brand new hood. And, and a rim. A, and a rim. Uh, yeah. Oh, they actually hooked me up with a brand new interior on this thing. Did yeah. you see that? The interior was tan. Exactly. Oh. Now, it was tan and now it's uh, now it's black. You got a whole black interior in it. Compliments a straight six. Auto dismantling. So thank you guys again for all the fun stuff. And we're gonna keep on putting little tidbits on the Teslamino. Anything else, boys? No. Hey. Like, subscribe, comment. We'll see you guys soon.